dollars and cents uh, segment, which is how we bring, or every week when we bring you a, a good financial idea or tip to help you improve your financial success as you either get close to retirement or in retirement. And today, for our dollars and cents segment, I want to talk about how you look at mutual funds and analyze the funds when you decide, is this a good fund or a bad fund? And many people refer to Morningstar. Morningstar is probably the best, most well-known, objective, third-party material that you can get on the mutual fund industry. There are certainly others, but it's the most well-known. And there's several things. First off, what a lot of people focus on is the rating. Is it five stars? Is it one star? Is it three star? Morningstar rates one to five stars. Uh, the rating that is important to know is that the rating compares that stock fund or that mutual fund, excuse me, not to all funds, but only to other funds in its category. So, for example, if you're looking at a fund that is large cap growth, so it invests in large companies that are growth type stocks, and you compare that fund to a, to what's called a moderate balanced allocation, where it might be a 60-40 mix of stocks and bonds, that's an apple and an orange. You just can't compare those two funds. So the rating is not everything. Um, you know, there are probably my biggest thing here is there are many things that are important when you look at mutual funds. There's no one thing that would be the only thing you would look at. I would say the investment category, which tells you the asset mix that that mutual fund is investing in, is as important as anything. Uh, if you look at your funds and you pull a Morningstar report and, and you have eight mutual funds and five of them are in the same investment category, you tell me, do you think there's some overlap in the stocks they're buying or the assets they're buying if they're all in the same category? How much diversification do you really have if all your mutual funds are in the same category or if half of them are all in the same category? You've got to know what the asset mix is. It's not just about any one fund in your portfolio. It's about how all of them in tandem together are performing. That's probably the most important thing. The rating, I mean, I want you to have good merchandise. You should only have great mutual funds. Uh, there's an inherent risk with mutual funds because just because they're great in the past doesn't mean they'll be great in the future. They have management risk. That's why you have to watch them like a hawk. The managers could become ineffective. The managers could turn over. But it's certainly a place to start. But you've got to look at the investment mix. What are the investments? What are the categories this fund is investing in also you should look at the expense ratio that's important now i'm not one of these that says that's all you should look at and you should only look for low-cost funds i am a big i'm more drift certainly to low-cost funds i'd prefer to have low-cost funds to anything else but i don't want to eliminate funds that aren't low-cost if you did that there are many many funds uh it is more the exception but there are a lot of good funds out there that are best in category over five, ten-year periods, or at least in the upper echelon, but they have kind of average expense ratio, some even above average. But if the return to you, the investor, still would have been best in category, why would you know, not want to consider that fund in your mix? I mean, we're, well, all we care about is what do you end up making on the fund, not... um you know, what any little bit or piece of it is. So the expense ratio is important because it can give us a, a little bit of a vision of why a fund may be underperforming, uh, but it's not the end all. Don't eliminate funds just because they ha don't have any low expense ratio. Um, and then the turnover of the fund is an important thing to look at. How, you know, the average mutual fund, according to John Bogle, the former chairman of the Vanguard Group, wrote the book John Bogle on Mutual Funds, uh, the average mutual fund has 90 to 100% turnover. What that means is with 100% turnover in a year, that means a fund is going to sell all its stocks and buy all new stocks in the course of a year, 100% turnover. You know, that affects, you know, that, that, that is a costly thing. Do you think there are expenses associated with all that buying and selling of the stocks? Absolutely. Um, you know, again, do you eliminate a, do you eliminate a fund just because it has high turnover? No. It's just an important factor. It also, if you're not in, if it, you have mutual funds that aren't inside IRAs that are not inside IRAs, you know, that turnover affects your, your, your tax treatment every year in a major way. So all these things are things you need to be aware of, but you got to look at everything together. And then once you look at that, if you find a mutual fund, if you're using, say, an online Morningstar type thing, then it's just a starting point. You then need to pull and, and really look at the details of maybe read a, a shareholder report, a quarterly report from the money management team of what they're trying to accomplish. You know, if, if you're if you 
choose to look at the prospectus. You know, you really should kind of look through some of the things in the prospectus, but you got to look at everything. It's not just one thing that's going to tell you everything you need to know and be particularly careful about looking at only the rating. I would say in the last 10 years, you're better off to be in a three-star mutual fund in some asset ca- in some categories than being in a five star in other categories. So you got to be now I'd rather you have a five four five star in the categories you're in, don't get me wrong, but the category and the asset mix is probably the most important thing and how those funds complement each other and make sure they're not duplicating themselves.